Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are looking at question 53 which is maximum subarray. So given an integer array nums, we want to find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number which has the largest sum and we want to return that sum. They are saying that a subarray is a contiguous part of an array. What does that mean? Basically if we look at this nums array. A contiguous subarray would be something like the following. Negative 2 and 1 is a contiguous subarray. Negative 2, 1, negative 3 is a contiguous subarray. Negative 2 alone is a contiguous subarray. Basically, if I move that line, I cannot have any spaces, any breaks in the line. So as long as I continue my line, this is a contiguous subarray. Now, what if negative 2, 1 and I skip 3? For negative 1. Is this a contiguous subarray? No. As you can see, my line broke here. I cannot do that. The numbers must be right next to each other. Negative 2, 1 is contiguous subarray. Um, this is a contiguous subarray, etc. Now we want to find the contiguous subarray that gives us the largest sum. They are saying that the largest sum is 6, and which contiguous subarray gives us 6? They are saying it is 4, negative 1, 2, 1. This contiguous subarray give us 6. Now, if we look at example 2, we have only one number. And we said a single number is contiguous subarray. And it's basically that number. So if we have 5, the maximum um, sum we get from a contiguous subarray is 5. If we have 6, we get 6, etc. It's only one number. Now, how can we do this? Let's go to the blackboard and explain the approach. Here we are at the blackboard and I have wrote a nums array containing 5, 4, negative 10, 7 and 8. Now looking at this, we can say that the maximum sum we can get from a contiguous array is 15. 7 plus 8 gives us 15. Now how can we get this? Okay, so well, a brute force approach would be something like the following. We want to calculate all the possible subarrays all the possible contiguous subarrays we can get from the nums array. We find the sum from each of those subarrays and we return the maximum sum, right? Simple. The time complexity of this approach would be either big O of n cubed or big O of n squared depends on how you implement this approach. I will show you how can we implement it in O of n cubed then how can we go to n squared so let's see we need to start from the start of the array obviously and we will have a pointer here and we will have another pointer why do we have two pointers well i will tell you one we will start at five five is a valid subarray we said if the um, subarray contains one element it's valid subarray we can have another subarray like this right 5 and 4 is continuous subarray. We can then see, oh, but we can go 5, 4, negative 10. As you can see, I am moving this blue pointer as I go, but we can get another subarray like this. And finally, we can get another subarray. As you can see, all these subarrays starts with the number 5. Either we get 5 or 5, 4 or 5, 4, negative 10, etc. Now when we reach the end, we advance this red pointer to find all the subarrays that start with the number 4. 4 is a valid subarray. Next. 4, negative 10 is a valid subarray. 4, negative 10, 7 is a valid subarray, etc. Now when this blue pointer reaches the end, we advance the red pointer again and we continue. As you can see, we have two pointers and we are moving through um, the array. But how can we get n cubed if we are only using two pointers, right? It should be n squared. Well, why are we even doing these two pointers? What are we doing? Well, let me tell you. When we start at 5 and we have these two pointers, we say that this subarray gives us 5, right? We want the maximum subarray. What is the sum here? Well, the sum is 5. Now, when we advance this blue pointer to 4, and we say, hey, we find another subarray. What is the sum of this subarray? We say, oh, it's 5 plus 4 gives us 9. 
Now when we advance the blue pointer again to go to negative 10, we say we have 5 plus 4 plus negative 10, we get a negative 1. As you can see, we need a for loop for the red pointer, we need a for loop for the blue pointer, and we need a for loop to add all the numbers between these two pointers. As you can see, we say 5 plus 4 plus negative 10 gives us negative 1. Now when we go to advance this blue pointer to 7, we see, oh, now we need 5 plus 4 plus negative 10 plus 7, and we get the answer. So this requires three nested for loops, and thus we get big O of n cubed. Now how can we go to big O of n squared? We will do the same thing. We will, we will also have two pointers, right? We will start here, but now the optimization lies into how can we add the numbers in between. Now when we say, okay, we start at five, the sum so far is five. But now when we go to four, we do the following. We don't go from the start and we start adding, okay, five plus four equals nine, no. We take, we store the maximum sum that we have so far somewhere, let's say it um, maximum so far, and we add each number we see by the blue pointer, we add it to this maximum so far. So we see a four, we say, okay, maximum so far plus four equals nine. When we advance to 10, we say, okay, what is the maximum so far now? It's nine. Nine plus negative 10 is negative one. Now, when we advance to seven, we say, oh, seven plus negative one, we get six, etc. So we don't need that third loop to add all the numbers in between. We don't need to go back to the start every time and add five plus four plus negative 10 plus seven. No, we just add the maximum so far with the new number and we get uh, the answer. This is big O of N squared. We only need two for loops, one for each pointer. Now, how can we go from big O of n squared to big O of n, to linear time? Well, let's have a look. Okay, so now we have decreased our time from n cubed to n squared, and now we want linear time, big O of n. How can we achieve that? Well, if we want linear time, we know that we only can move through the array once, from left to right. That's it. So we need one for loop, and we can only move through the array once. So let's say we start at index zero. I have created two variables. One is called max so far, and the other one is called max. The max so far will tell us what is the maximum subarray we can achieve so far, right? But the max is basically what we will return, the final thing that we will return, the final max that we know for sure, okay, this subarray gives us the maximum sum, this number will be stored inside of the max variable. Now I have created two equations here. I will explain them, just bear with me. So now let's say we start at index zero and we see a five. Well, we need to ask ourselves one question at each position. For instance, at index zero, we need to ask the following question. What is the best thing we can achieve at index zero? What is the maximum contiguous subarray? we can achieve at index zero. Well, we only have one number here, so the maximum so far should be five. It's the only number, like we don't have anything else except for five. So the maximum so far is five, and the max is also five. As I said, it's the only number. But now, when we go to here, now we reach index one. We ask the same question. What is the best thing we can do at index one? What is the maximum contiguous subarray we can achieve at index one? Well, we have two possibilities, right? The first one is we say, well, I don't like the maximum so far that we have. It hurt my maximum sum and I want, I want to discard it. I want to make a fresh start at index one and I want my new subarray to start at index one and to have the value four, okay? Basically, I want to say, okay, the maximum so far hurts my sum, I don't want it, discard it, make a fresh start here, and this number is my maximum uh, so far. But the other possibility would be is to attach this number to my contiguous subarray. I like my maximum sum so far, and I think this value would give me a bigger sum. So I want to extend 
my sub array so basically i want my maximum sum so far to stay and i want to extend it with the value 4 and we see which possibility gives us the bigger sum is it 4 or is it 5 plus 4 well we see 5 plus 4 equals 9 and 9 is greater which means i want to extend my subarray to include the 4 so my new subarray is 5 and 4 and the maximum so far we said is 9 so let's update it and now we see that 9 is greater than 5 so we also need to update the maximum variable that we need to return instead of 5 this also needs to be a 9 okay good now we go to the next number so if you don't get it right away it's fine you will get it as we go through the array so let's go to the next number okay so now we see negative 10 we ask the same question what is the best thing we can achieve if we stop at index 2 well should we make a new fresh start at index 2 and we say okay our maximum should be negative 10 or hey i want to add this negative 10 to my sub array to make this new contiguous sub array well if we do that we would have what is the maximum sum so far it's 9 and we said we want to attach the negative 10 to it well what is 9 plus negative 10 this equals negative 1 now what is greater negative 10 or negative 1 well negative 1 is greater which means we need to attach this negative 10 to our sub array and our new sub array would be 5 4 and negative 10 so now let's update the maximum so far because remember we got a negative 1 and now you see the benefit of this variable right here what is greater negative 1 or 9 well the max is 9 and I do not want to update it to negative 1 because as you can see 9 is greater so I do not touch this maximum um, sum okay and this is basically what the equations are saying for the maximum so far at each position we ask ourselves one question what is the best thing we can do should we make a new start and take that number as the new fresh start or do we want to attach it to our sub array basically take that maximum so far and attach the new number we compare we see which value makes the most sense and we update the maximum so far and for the max we see okay what is greater this new maximum so far or my max that i want to return the greater one would be the max okay let's continue now we go to seven okay now we see the seven and we ask the same question what is the best thing we can do well we can make a new start at seven it's a fresh start or we can attach seven to the sub array but the maximum so far is negative one if we want to attach that seven to it what we would get negative one plus seven give us six what is what is better for us to make a new fresh start at seven or to attach that seven to my old maximum so far well my old maximum so far is hurting me i don't want that i want to make a new fresh start at seven and thus we update the maximum so far to seven we want to make a new fresh start at seven and yes and now we we see well is seven greater than my max no see so we don't want to update our max now finally we want to see if we see an eight as you can see now seven is my new fresh start well we see should we add eight to my maximum so far or should i make a new fresh start at eight let's see if we want to make a new fresh start at eight we would get eight but if i want to attach it to my new sub array i would get seven plus eight 7 plus 8 equals 15 well we see we get the most value from attaching this 8 to my sub array so we want to extend our sub array to include 7 and 8 and thus the maximum so far is 15 and we see that 15 is greater than 9 so we also update our max to 15 and we got our answer 15 is 
the best thing we can achieve it's the biggest sum from a contiguous subarray as you can see this give us the maximum contiguous sum 15 and as you can see we only moved through the array once so our time complexity is big o of n so remember these two equations and let's go to lead code okay here we are at lead code and we said we need to keep track of two things the first thing is the maximum so far so int max so far right and we need the other thing is the max that we want to return what is the max like the final thing that we want to return well it's int max and we said for both of these things we want a starting point so let's pick the first number in the array to be the maximum so far and the max so this will equal nums of zero and here also nums of zero okay now we said we only want to move through the array once and we only want one for loop so for for int i equals what we already took care of the number at index zero so we want to start from int i equals one and to the end of the array so i is less than nums of length and i plus plus okay good now now remember the two equations that we had in the blackboard we had an equation for the maximum so far and this equation was we want to pick the maximum between two things so math dot max between two things what are these two things well we said hey do you want to make a new fresh start at index i or do you want to attach that number to our um maximum so far right so max so far plus nums of i once we do that we need to compare it with our max that we want to return so max equals same thing math.max and now we will compare hey what is greater our max that we have or this new maximum so far once we finish the loop we would have our answer and we return our max so return max let's run the code let's submit as you can see faster than 100 percent okay so looking at the time and space complexity starting with the space complexity as you can see we did everything in place we did not utilize any data structure extra space so it's constant space we go off one and now in terms of the time complexity we only had one for loop and we moved through the array once assuming we have n numbers in the array the time complexity is big o of n i hope you guys enjoyed the video best of luck to you and see you in the next one